If you have built or bought a PC recently, you may have come across the term PCIe or PCI Express. PC enthusiasts may already be familiar with what PCIe is and what it does, but for those who have heard the term and just brushed it off as some complicated computer jargon, let's break down what PCIe is and what we can expect from the new PCIe 5.0 standard that is coming new to motherboards and CPUs. PCIe stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a mouthful, hence why people just call it PCI Express or PCIe. PCIe is one of two mainstream interconnects for your motherboard, the other being USB. Just like USB, these ports allow us to connect various devices to our PC. But unlike USB, PCIe is located on the motherboard directly. The PCIe ports are most commonly used for devices like graphics cards, video capture cards, audio cards, network interface cards, and even SSDs. This is because PCIe ports offer really high bandwidth as compared to the ports like USB. Also, for devices like your graphics card, they can't afford to work on a port with high latency and less bandwidth like a USB port. Consider it like this. If the USB port on your PC are like intercity roads, then PCIe is like interstate highways. They both serve different purposes, but one allows for faster data transfer than the other at a much higher scale. The USB interface is easier to use and obviously is more accessible. Meanwhile, the PCE slots offer really high data transmission rates that is just not possible on a USB port. PCE comes in a bunch of different physical configurations. These are X1, X2, X4, X8, and X16 being the most popular. The number after the X tells you how many lanes that the PCIe slot has. Lanes are the highways on which the data travels to and from the PCIe device or card. A PCIe X1 slot has one lane that can move one bit of data per cycle. A PCIe X2 slot has two lanes and can move two bits per cycle, so on and so on. The important thing to note is that a particular graphics card or device can only take full advantage of the available lanes that it supports. So for example, you can insert a PCIe X1 graphics card into a PCIe X16 slot, but that card will transfer data at one single lane. On the other hand, same goes the other way around. If you insert a PCIe X8 uh, card into a PCIe X4 slot on your motherboard, then you will only be using four lanes that are connected onto your motherboard, essentially cutting your data transmission rate by half. Now these examples are obviously a little bit unrealistic, but this is why it's important for people building new gaming PCs to match up the lanes available on their motherboard to the ones on their PCE card that it supports. No one wants to bottleneck their PC because they bought the wrong motherboard or even just tried using the wrong slot on your motherboard. But lanes aren't the only important thing about PCE ports. The bandwidth on each of those single lanes are very important too. Currently, the most commonly used PC generation, which is PCA uh, 4.0, has a bandwidth of almost 64 gigabits, uh, gigabytes per second or 512 gigabits per second for an aggregated X16 interconnect. To put this into perspective, USB 3.1 Gen 2 has a data transfer rate of 10 gigabits per second. That is around 50 times less the transfer rate on PC 4.0. This further illustrates the huge difference in data transmission rates using PCE and USB. Intel was actually a little bit slow to accept PC 4.0. When Intel released its 10th generation chipset codenamed Comet Lake, it didn't actually support PC 4.0. This was disappointing for a lot of Intel fans because their direct competitor AMD offered PC 4.0 with both Zen 2 and their Zen 3 chipset. But Intel changed this all around luckily with their Intel 11th gen Rocket Lake offering better performance and PC 4.0 support, not just on the graphics card, but also also for NVMe drives as well. PCIe 4.0 has been dominant for the past year or two, but as people are just starting to upgrade their PCIe PC builds to the new standard, 
another standard is about to make an appearance. When Gen 4 first came out, we saw a jump in motherboard prices due to motherboards requiring higher quality materials and more PCB layers. These are both required to ensure Gen 4 speeds are stable. This is especially true of the AMD X570 platform, which had full Gen 4 support on both the CPU lanes and chipset lanes. We can only imagine that the same thing is going to happen with Gen 5 and probably be a little bit worse since Gen 5 is obviously going to be a new platform and is significantly faster than PC Gen 4. But with Intel supporting PC 5.0 only on the CPU, motherboard prices might not be as expensive as they could be. It is much easier for motherboard manufacturers to build boards around one or two Gen 5 PC slots than to build an entire board to support PC 5.0. Sadly, even though motherboards will be coming out with PC support soon, there aren't actually that many devices on the market that can support PC 5.0. The current generation of NVIDIA RTX cards, for example, the 3000 series, is based on the uh, PC 4.0 architecture, but PC 5.0 is expected to debut with various components out in 2022, maybe even 2023, depending on obviously the global situation. So let's take a look at what makes PC 5.0 such a huge game changer potentially. PC 5.0, as the name 5.0 suggests, is the fifth generation of PCIe. It will bring an unprecedented 128 gigabytes per second throughput from a full duplex bandwidth of an X16 interface. And for those wondering, the specification is actually backwards compatible with previous PCIe generations. An important thing to note is that your PCIe card will run at the uh, lowest generation possible, meaning that even if your motherboard supports PC 5.0 and your PC card, let's say, supports 4.0, you will only get the performance of a 4.0 slot. You won't get the generation 5.0. We can expect that the next generation NVIDIA and AMD GPUs to support 5.0, but there's no official confirmation on that. But do we actually need 5.0? I mean, some of us have only just upgraded to PC 4.0 within the last year, right? So should we really be upgrading our systems to PC 5.0 when it becomes available? Well, honestly, that depends. Industry experts believe that we may see PC 5.0 and 4.0 coexist for a while. This is because PC 5.0 will mostly be used for really high performance needs for things like GPUs running artificial intelligence workloads and other networking applications. We might also see our production studios who typically run extremely high-end systems to produce our favorite films to be the first to adopt this too. We might also see PC 5.0 hit things like data sensors and uh, high performance computing environments. A regular PC user or even gamer will probably be fine with PC 4.0 for quite some time. The main benefit will be when PC 5.0 SSDs come to the market, but even Intel's Alder Lake at the moment doesn't support SSDs that have 5.0 support. And we don't even know if AMD will support it with their Zen 4 architecture, which could be coming into late 2020 to 2023 until we see that. Despite the incredible speeds of PC 5.0, we have seen that it's pretty much overkill for most PC users and gamers. People will only really take full advantage of PC 5.0 when it comes to things like SSDs, because the faster we can transfer things, the better it is. And for a lot of games and stuff like this, where they can reach 100 gigabytes per second, right? These uh, faster speeds could potentially make more of a difference to PC gamers and even content creators. But with graphics card, even the uh, latest 3090 series of RTX cards from Nvidia, they don't fully utilize PC 4.0. So I can't imagine graphics cards really utilizing PC 5.0. And we're so close to uh, the SSD standards reaching the limit of an X4 uh, PC 4.0 slot. So I can't imagine what the future will hold once PC 5.0 X4 slots start making its way to the mainstream. The only people that will truly be able to take full advantage of the PC 5.0 standard will be people working with things like machine learning, artificial intelligence, production studios, or in data centers. Frankly, they're 
isn't much need for that fast speed in our daily lives. And like I said, apart from potentially fast transfer speeds with NVMe drives, but that doesn't look like it's gonna be coming for at least another year or two, or if AMD will even support it on their next platform, just like Intel hasn't. But anyway, that's it for today's video. If you found this video interesting, then please hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with content like this. Anyway, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.